Welcome to Lesson 12a, Non-Dimensionalization of the Equations of Fluid Flow. In this lesson, we assign characteristic scales, or scaling parameters, and use them to non-dimensionalize the equations of fluid flow. I'll also explain the difference between non-dimensionalization and normalization, and I'll do an example problem. By way of introduction, we have three ways to solve the Navier-Stokes equation, or more generally, the equations of fluid flow, which include continuity and Navier-Stokes. Analytically, in previous lessons I've done this, and we get exact solutions, but this is restricted to very simple problems. Numerically, using CFD, we can do this for complex flows, but it requires a computer and sophisticated software. Our third option is approximately, and that's where we ignore some terms in the Navier-Stokes equation right at the beginning, and then we solve an approximate form of the equation. This method is what we'll talk about in this lesson. The first step is to non-dimensionalize the equations. Our goal is to rewrite the equations of fluid flow in non-dimensional form. Why? So we can compare terms in the Navier-Stokes equation to see which of them, if any, are negligibly small compared to other terms. This is properly done by non-dimensionalizing the equations. In fact, we'll normalize the equations, and I'll explain the difference between these two later. If so, in other words, if we can neglect some terms, we can solve an approximate, simpler equation set. Here we'll consider only incompressible flow of a Newtonian fluid. Here are our equations of fluid flow, continuity, and Navier-Stokes. Let's consider continuity first. In Cartesian coordinates, the gradient vector is del del xi plus del del yj plus del del zk, and the velocity vector is ui plus vj plus wk. The vector coordinate x is xi plus yj plus zk. To non-dimensionalize, we have to introduce scaling parameters and non-dimensional variables. We'll use an asterisk or star superscript for all non-dimensional variables. All these variables are dimensional without any superscript. As scaling parameters, we let L equal some characteristic length scale in the flow. For example, if you're looking at flow over a circular cylinder, you would set L equal to the diameter. Then our non-dimensional x coordinate x star will be x over L. Since x has a dimension of length, and so does L, this is non-dimensional. Again, in Cartesian coordinates, x star equal x over L, and similarly for y star and z star. We also have a velocity in our continuity equation, so we need a characteristic velocity scale. I'll use a capital V. Typically, this might be an average speed or a free stream speed if you're talking about flow over a body. Then we define the non-dimensional velocity as the dimensional velocity over the characteristic velocity. Again, dimensions of speed over dimensions of speed is non-dimensional. And in Cartesian coordinates, u star equal u over v, v star equal v over v, and w star is w over v. What about the gradient operator in the continuity equation? We have to deal with that one also. The dimensions of the gradient operator are the dimensions of 1 over length, since the del operator in Cartesian coordinates is written as these three components of the vector, all of them containing a length in the denominator. So we define del star equal L times the gradient operator. This del vector star is a non-dimensional form of the gradient vector. Thus our continuity equation, del dot V equals zero, becomes del star over L, since this equation can be rewritten del equal del star over L, and similarly V equal V star times our characteristic speed V. So this V becomes V star V. V and L are constants, so we bring them outside, and our continuity equation becomes V over L del star del V star equals zero, but we multiply both sides by L over V, and we get del star dot V star equals zero. This is our non-dimensionalized continuity equation. Notice that our characteristic length and velocity scales have gone away. This won't be the case for the Navier-Stokes equation. Let's repeat this same kind of analysis with the Navier-Stokes equation. Before I do the non-dimensionalization, let's determine the primary dimensions of each term in the Navier-Stokes equation. Since all terms have to have the same dimensions, let's pick an easy one. 
rho g, the dimensions of rho g are the dimensions of mass over volume times length over time squared, which simplifies to m over l squared t squared. Every term in this equation has to have these same dimensions to be dimensionally consistent. Let's examine the gradient of pressure term. The dimensions of gradient are 1 over L, as we said above. Pressure is a force, mass times acceleration, divided by an area, L squared, which also reduces to M over L squared T squared. These are the same, and the dimensions of all the other terms are also consistent. To non-dimensionalize this equation, we need several scaling parameters. We've already defined a characteristic length and a characteristic speed. These are the primary dimensions. We'll also pick a characteristic frequency and a characteristic reference pressure difference. We must talk about a pressure difference because pressure differences are important in a fluid flow, not the absolute magnitude of the pressure. We know that because pressure appears as a gradient in the Navier-Stokes equation. A gradient represents derivatives, which are differences in pressure. P0 is some reference pressure, and P infinity is some other reference pressure, typically in the free stream. And then finally we have G, the gravitational acceleration. We also have fluid properties, rho and mu, in the Navier-Stokes equation. So these also will be used to complete the analysis. Again, we define non-dimensional variables using the scaling parameters that we just defined. Here's a list of all the non-dimensional variables. We recognize these three from the continuity equation, but we also define a G star, a P star, and a T star. All of these are non-dimensional. We can verify for T star, which is a frequency 1 over time, times a time, which is indeed non-dimensional. This one's obviously non-dimensional, and pressure over pressure is also non-dimensional. We want to plug these non-dimensional variables into the Navier-Stokes equation, so I'll just rewrite them first as dimensional variables. T star equal FT, so T equal 1 over FT star. Here we solve for P, we get this, and we do that with all the variables. We plug all these into the Navier-Stokes equation, and I split up the first term into two terms. So this is our dimensional Navier-Stokes equation. I'll do the math on the left side. We have rho, del V V star, since V is V V star, del T star over F, since T is 1 over F T star. Again, we collect all the constants. We do a similar thing with the second term. We have V V star dot 1 over L del star operating on V V star. Again, rearranging all the constants together, we have rho V squared over L V star dot del star V star. And I'll leave it to the viewer to do the right-hand side in a similar way. When we put it all together, we get these five terms, the two on the left that we've analyzed, plus these three terms on the right. Since every additive term in the above equation has primary dimensions m over l squared t squared, and we want to non-dimensionalize the equation, we multiply by l over rho v squared. Multiplying by l over rho v squared will eliminate this grouping of terms, and we just do some simple math on these other terms. Now all the dimensions have canceled, and we end up with these four non-dimensional parameters. These are all pi's, which we learned about in our lesson on dimensional analysis. Reynolds number, Froude number, this is actually the inverse of the Froude number squared, and the inverse of the Reynolds number. This is called the Euler number, and this is called the Struhl number. Every term in the above equation is now non-dimensional, and I rewrite it as follows. This is the Navier-Stokes equation in non-dimensional form where we have these four non-dimensional parameters, or pi's. Before we can do anything useful with this equation, I need to explain the difference between non-dimensionalization and normalization. This equation is non-dimensional regardless of the scales that we picked. I could have picked a velocity scale of 1 meter per second or 10,000 meters per second, and we'd still get this same equation. Similarly, I could have picked any length scale, 1 millimeter or 5 kilometers. I'd still get a non-dimensional equation. But remember that our goal was to compare these terms to see which of them, if any, can drop out because they're negligibly small compared to the others. We've done non-dimensionalization, and as I said, we can use any scaling parameters and end up with the above equation. Normalization is much more restrictive. To normalize the equation, we choose scaling parameters like L, V, etc. that are appropriate for the flow being analyzed. 
so that all non-dimensional variables in the above equation are order of magnitude unity. In other words, their minimum and maximum values are reasonably close to 1, as we show here for all of the starred or non-dimensional variables. We use a tilde to represent order of magnitude. Tilde is not the same as an equal sign or even an approximately equal sign. We're talking about orders of magnitude where we compare numbers like 10 to the minus 3 to 100, which would be five orders of magnitude different from each other. So if we've properly normalized the Navier-Stokes equation, then we can compare the relative importance of the various terms by comparing the relative magnitudes of the non-dimensional parameters. I'll illustrate with an example. Suppose we have water at 20 degrees C flowing over an object. For water at 20 degrees C, we look up the density and the viscosity. And for this object, say it's flow over a cylinder, the diameter is 0.6 meters. So we set that as our characteristic length scale. We set characteristic speed as the free stream speed and characteristic frequency as 4 hertz, which is the vibration frequency. There's a pressure difference between the stagnation pressure and the static pressure at some reference point. So we set that equal to our characteristic pressure difference. Now let's compare the magnitudes of each of the five terms in the Navier-Stokes equation. Struhl number is FL over V. We plug in our characteristic scales and we get 0.6. Since these are order of magnitudes, I'm going to keep only one significant digit. This term has order of magnitude 0.6 to one significant digit. For this term, if we've properly normalized, the order of magnitude should be 1. Now we calculate the Euler number, 8,000 newton per meter squared, over our density and our characteristic velocity squared with the unity conversion factor, and I get 0.501. So this term is of order of magnitude 0.5. Now consider 1 over the Froude number squared. From our definition of Froude number, this is GL over V squared. And when we plug in the numbers, we get 0.368. So this is order of magnitude 0.4. Finally, 1 over Reynolds number is mu over rho VL. And when we plug in the numbers, we get 4.18 times 10 to the minus 7th. So this last term is of order of magnitude 4 times 10 to the minus 7th. So clearly in this problem, the viscous term is negligibly small compared to any of these other terms. None of these other terms can be neglected compared to this order of magnitude 1 term, but this one is certainly negligible. So what does that mean? If we ignore the viscous terms in the Navier-Stokes equation, we get, and I'm writing this in dimensional form now, the original equation, we neglect the viscous terms and we get this equation, which is actually called the Euler equation, which is the Navier-Stokes equation without the viscous terms. This is an approximate equation, which we can use to solve this problem. Without these viscous terms, this is an easier equation to solve than the full Navier-Stokes equation. I caution that the solution will be an approximate solution, which may not be accurate. For example, the viscous terms may indeed be negligible in the bulk of the flow, but very close to the wall, these viscous terms are always important. So flow near the wall may not be very accurate, and that can lead to errors in where the flow separates, which may change the overall behavior of the flow. So we have to be very careful in applying these approximations. I want to go back to our equation in non-dimensional form and put labels on these terms for future reference. This is called the unsteady term, the inertial term, the pressure term, the gravitational term, and the viscous term. Depending on the characteristic scales of the problem, one or more of these terms may be negligible. In our example, the viscous term was negligible. In some other examples, the unsteady term would be negligible. Or perhaps all the terms could be negligible except this one and this one, or any other combination but I'll use these names to refer to the terms that we neglect when we form our approximate equations. We'll discuss several different kinds of approximate solutions in the following lessons. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.